guess we're all right the way we were. Just the way we are here. Let's see. Are we here? Yes, we are here. I am me, and all will agree are three. We, and we are three. Um, Twitch.tv slash Conspiracy Horseman. Never gonna get it, 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 never get it. Sleep. That's right. We're back. Day nine. Insomnia. Transmissions live from the locker room, but that doesn't slow down the shows at all, infidels, because we got a full day coming at you. It's the Ultra K Fave Declassified Transmission with Colt Cabana and Odin's dad here. On your Friday locker room. Yalla. Ha ha ha. Uh, getting punchy, man. Get the brosters in me. Get uh, the caffeine flowing. Uh, and uh, you look as good as always. Five o'clock shadow. I, he's, he's always got the beard trimmer set to a two or a one. So he looks like, oh, no, I'm not trying. Uh, this is how I look all the time. <laughs> and, uh, no, I don't use uh, my wife's hair care products and make sure my part is... Uh, uh, you know, obsessively straight down the middle, but just off to the side enough to make him think, you know, I don't give a fuck because that's really what an influencer has to look like. Like, I just live this life every day. Well, first of all, I'm extremely offended that you call me an influencer to begin with because I'm not out there on the street going, is this a good pose? Are the people behind me with the with the signs? Yeah. Uh, is there fire in the background? Am yeah. I a good influencer? Uh, oh, piece of shit. By the way, your song, Never Gonna Get It, could run the gambit across multiple categories of people in and out of wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> never gonna get it. Yeah, you're never gonna get it. Stuck on So, stupid. fortunately, the ones that do get it are the ones that are being ostracized and marginalized and canceled and unpersoned. Yeah. I mean, mostly in wrestling. We'll talk about that because it, let's keep it a little bit light. By the way, LG, don't buy this fucking TV. 15 months old. It's interesting. I'm going to show you right behind me if you're watching the video. I, I'm I, This LG TV over here, 15 months old, starts power cycling, doesn't turn on, 3%, whatever you call it. This TV here, this Samsung, which is almost like a CRT TV, the old school thick ones, mm -hmm. 10 years old. This one hasn't been moved around, by the way. The LG stayed right here the entire 15 months. This has moved around two to three times. My wife had it before we even started dating. This is running strong. This is dead. Done. And we, we talked about this, too, because I contacted um, warranty support with Costco because I buy from there for the two-year warranty. How do you call a place and you stay on hold for 35 minutes, you troubleshoot, which is, it, it's tedious for somebody that's already troubleshot before they call support because mm. I don't want to go through troubleshooting, but I will for 30 minutes only to be put on hold for another 10 to 15 minutes. So the person calls me back and says, or actually comes off hold and says, um, they're too busy for you right now. So you'll have to call back. Here's your case number. Oh, okay. So I contact LG directly to, to, to actually, I put up an Instagram story that, that said dead, 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 15 months, mm -hmm. eight plus years, still going strong. Mm -hmm. It's just the truth. And they say, Hey, we want to help you. They saw the numbers. And I guess, cause they don't contact just anybody. They saw 26,000 on Instagram, whatever on Twitter sure. and said, we're, we want to help you. We want to do this and that and the other thing. I gave them all the information, including going to Costco and putting a stupid mask on to get a copy of my receipt from 15 months ago. And they're radio silent. Like, like since Monday. I heard uh, if you go on Craigslist in uh, Minnesota right now that uh, you can get them pretty cheap. Uh, there's a bunch of them floating around. There's no warranty on them, but you can get them pretty cheap. Oh, we got a Target near us. I heard they're, you know, <laughs> they're literally get, a Target. They're giving right them now. away. They're giving them away over there. No, so I, you know, that's the, in the world that we're talking about everything. But uh, I did a, I did a video when I bought this because like, you know, 400, under 400 bucks for a 55 inch TV, yeah. even though they keep pushing down, it's a really good price. And you know how much I, I love spending money. Yeah. You so, for it. so I, I, but I paid for it and I'm like, Oh, this is, this is a really good TV. It's good. I should tell people about this rather than spending the extra money for a Samsung, which I put my foot in my mouth right now. Cause the extra hundred bucks is probably worth it. I just feel like that the, on a bigger note from that, 
the the entire world seems to in a in a business sense or in any kind of sense of attention to detail or pride in your work or even just pride in your business or keeping the the customer or the client happy outside of our ventures because if we don't treat people right it's going to show immediately that we're not doing our job it's just amazing how failing upwards and mediocrity and this kind of stuff is acceptable now. I don't uh, know. It seems I like all you have to do is get your foot in the door. And once you're on the other side, you can do whatever you want and be an idiot. I don't know. I, it doesn't make much sense. I'm trying to tie it into what we might talk about, but it just seems like pride, pride in your own work and pride in your own accountability on a larger scale seems to be lost in this world. Oh yeah. Craftsmanship to, uh, you know, just taking responsibility for the smallest things and being there to do it. Like as it all falls down, people just going to do less and less. This, uh, Jay house has his AirPod pro three broken in three months old after having it. I got these JBL, uh, gimmicks, you know, Bluetooth and they were good for like three months and now one ear is blown and the other one doesn't, isn't nearly as loud anymore. I mean, I put them through the ringer working out, but still like, what are you just supposed to have them and not like they're made for that, you know, or supposed to be anyway. So everything is disposable in this culture and, uh, including the people <laughs> really, that's how they look at it. Um, so there is no, yeah. unless you're well, making I'll, it yourself, you know what I mean? Or that's kind of why I like 3d printing so much too. Cause then I'm not, not like I can make TVs and shit like that, but it's just the fact that, okay, I have the ability to do this and I don't have to be beholden to some other bullshit, you know? Well, you know, the AirPods are another thing. I had those and the, the repairability score is zero. Yeah. So it's it's truly a disposable product, which, yep. which the you know, larger than wrestling, larger than other things, except for the things we'll probably cover next, is the fact that we are such consumers. And I thought the, the COVID thing and quarantine and maybe forcing people to have a little bit of perspective instead of, once again, in 2020, we failed another test as humanity. Uh, I thought people would see, wow, there is more to life than just going out and shopping every day and, and consuming. And maybe I'll get myself out of credit card debt and I'll give myself a little, little bit of room to really enjoy my life. Mm. Didn't work. The minute they started opening stuff up, people are in line buying stuff. They don't even know they, if they, they need or not. Just got to buy something and get mm -hmm. that, that dopamine hit. Um, but I'll tell you what it did for me. Like looking at that, that's why I got a, I picked the computer I did because I want to be good for the next five to 10 years, repair it if I can. And also when we, before we got this LG and the Vizio broke the same exact thing, three to four years old, shouldn't, shouldn't break and just die in three to four years. But I really do believe they're designed to do that. Why would your stock be worth a damn if people have TVs that last 10, 15 sure, years. Sure, yeah. You, well, you, what you got to do then is come up with new products like that will beat the TV. You know what I mean? Like the VCR going to DVD or what have you. Yeah. But, the, the you know, just to close the point on this, it, you know, we look at you and I, Ben, and Papa Don and Sal, and, and now my wife and hopefully the people in our life, look at things, I think, a little bit differently because of our conspiracy foundation. Mm -hmm. And we'll look at the the, the agendas. I look at this TV and then I look at this TV and I don't say I got a broken TV here. Life sucks. I said, well, we have a TV here and it's, it's working great. And we're thankful to have something to watch. And if, even if this broke or we didn't have it, I have an iPad and iPhone. We can watch YouTube. We can watch all the stuff we want, or maybe we don't watch TV and we start reading books more and we start doing research and we start getting outside a little bit. There's always something hmm that you can make the worst day of your life or you can make it to something that, oh, okay, cool, that's gone. So maybe I can be more productive in this area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all how you're going to fill that time. Absolutely. When you see what a distraction some of these things are that become a frustration. Chat room's filled up with 20. Gil Kong in there uh, says, uh, what does the TV do? Can you possibly help? Because they uh, repairs TVs and uh, monitors. So... Uh, pretty interesting there. Uh, get get at Stevie uh, Stevie Richards Fitness at gmail dot com. Um, yeah. Brent, well, Brent Logan well, in, the, the, in the house the, as well. I'm he sorry. said to, it's all good. He said thanks, to Stevie, for setting up uh, Russo's Roadcaster sound pad because he's having a blast with it on every show. So uh, the, thank you, Stevie, for adding more joy to the listeners' lives. 
Oh, no problem. This thing has a class action lawsuit, this LG and a lot of models for the power cycling issue. They're saying either the motherboard goes bad after a while, the power supply or the motherboard and the power supply. They essentially, I bought the car, I bought the warranty from Costco or I bought the TV that comes with a two year warranty, which has always been good. But when they finally, the guy was about to hang up on me, I go, well, what, what, what's going on? I mean, are they still going to come out and fix it? Or like, can I get a replacement? I go, well, they're going to, when you talk to the rep, they're going to give you your warranty options, which gives me the, the impression that I'm going to have to pay, which gives me the impression that it's forcible, like forcible replacement. If it's going to try, cost me $200 to repair, any sane person is going to go 50, 55 inch TVs are now 300 bucks. Why am I going to repair this? Why not just get a different brand of a new? It's not the right attitude, but mm -hmm. that's what you're forcing the consumer to do to consume. Uh, and Russo with the Rocaster Pro, we'll need to get to his uh, That's Life episode, I'm sure, sooner rather than later. He sounds amazing. You know, he sounds amazing, and we're going to do more streams. Dude, did, what are you laughing for? I just, uh, he does sound amazing, but did you like when I had to keep heating on him? Because he's like, he's right up on the mic like he usually is, and he doesn't need, he can be way back here if he wants to be out of range with that mic. But he's just, you see him stretching his neck like he always does, like the radio mm -hmm. DJ stretch. Man, his neck's got to be killing him at the end of the night, dude. Just sit back. You can sound just as good as you usually yeah, do. He needs that scissor arm. They're going to send it to him. Yeah. I told him, too, that, uh, I said, you know, remember I, I did the American Psycho line. I was mm -hmm. like, don't stare at it, just eat it. Don't yeah. stare at it, just mm -hmm. eat it. <laughs> Speaking of scissoring, did you see those Liv Morgan pictures where they're like half porn of her like squatting down, showing her box and shit in, in like a, in like another dominatrix fucking thing? That was yeah, yeah. I think we had it in the messenger. Yeah, about, we... You know, I asked her for her mom. If her mom taught her that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, this one's for you, mom. <laughs> Oh man. It's a very weird brain. Like they, they, with that gimmick, we said it on Russo. She has to go the way of fatal attraction. She yeah. has to go multiple personality because she's legitimately showed multiple personalities on social media and TV. Well, you want to talk multiple personality. How about the Tamina fucking thing too? Like it's a week of weird girls trying to do shit on social media. That's not cleared with the office. I think Tamina put out that three minute fucking her in a straight jacket. She's gone crazy. She was the nice one. And now after 10 years, her tits her time and she it drove her nuts. So like the whole thing is that the office fucking worked her to drive her absolutely psycho. And now she was going to go off of this and dude, a way smaller dose, 30 seconds, three minutes was way too much. How long it was. Yeah. Oh dude. It, yeah. If you were going to try and get it over. So then that gets taken down and she puts up a gif of her that just fades in and out with the belt and with Phil Collins in the air tonight behind it, which is 30 seconds. I'm like, what, what is going on, dude, with these, the, you know, like you said, people taking pride in their work or getting it or protecting any business. And I'll, there's another story I want to talk that deserves another shot right in the fucking twat is, uh, <laughs> is the, Becky Lynch workout story thing. I want to get your opinion on that in a little bit, but uh, dude. Well, the Tamina thing is interesting because I went through this and we all go through this. And this is why it's great to have people around both of us, me for you, you for me, mm. pop it on Sal, even to an extent, the people that watch our product that hopefully will be honest to say, this is what it appears to me because perception is reality. You hate it here and it in the, from the office all the time. I hated it because reality is reality, not perception is reality, but from a viewer, from a casual viewer or from somebody who doesn't know, they don't live around Tamina all the time or Tamina. Right. They, she had to look at that honestly before she made that first one. Tam, And, said, like and said, okay, Sasha <clears throat> Bailey and all these people that as a shoot know me as the nice one. Mm -hmm. But since day one, she's been booked as the big quiet killer or some version of the big or her and I are telling the anytime she's been on TV, she hasn't displayed anything nice. 
no. or any kind of kindness. No. Am I wrong? Have I missed something? No, there's never any friendship realities. Uh, she doesn't have a best friend, apparently. Uh, the, <laughs> you know. Well, she's walked on TV one time, what, two months ago or something like that with a t-shirt about the mean and nice thing. Yeah. And that's the first you've seen like, oh, she's, she's nice. You haven't seen one of show don't tell, right? I haven't seen one instance of her and she needed to honestly, objectively and critically look at her own gimmick and say, how am I presented and how can I change minds? And if she paid to produce that, or if she had Jimmy paradise or somebody help her out, she knows the office isn't going to do it unless it's their idea. Sure. So your number one thing is convince the office. It's their idea before it even airs. Instead of going into biz for yourself and then having a tweet, apologize, dive, repeat. Yeah. Oh man, uh, these decisions. Jack Ryder's a Jack Ryder's a. Uh, now that he's finally opening up about what really happened and how they, they, we knew they were and we know they are. It's it's something that everybody should look at and say, okay, well, how can I, how can I, how can I not make the mistakes of a Stevie Richards who kept his mouth shut and tried to be a good team player and picked the wrong spots to open his mouth and try to stand up for his own business and got fucked over. How can we be less like a Zack Ryder also yeah. and correct those mistakes and learn from their, these two guys and many more. And I, I'm putting myself in that category. I think Zack Ryder is the guy to like really take it to him now, even though he's been even vanilla on the fence about talking shit about him, but why not go to AEW and the first thing they do <laughs> Is a is like a backyard broski thing. Is him having a pool party with all the baby faces and everyone's jumping in the pool and shit like that. As a fuck you, right, right to him. You know what I mean? Like the internet will love that kind of shit. Like I think he's he could be the conduit to do it. Every fuck you that they really need to deliver to WWE. Yeah, I mean he can do it. He can do it in a bunch of different ways. He can sure. be that social media guy. Do you think he's been? Do you think that because it's hard, it's hard for people to to stay loyal after a while, after you've been dogged so much, like, even though he has a ton of followers, that was a very, um, you had to capitalize on the timing of that. The first time when rock got in there and endorsed him and all that, they, yeah. that was off to the races. He probably thought it was off to the races right then and there, but he shouldn't have known at the same time. We're at the garden. And then they don't have me on this pay-per-view and rock has to put me over or we're raw, whatever it was. Yeah. They purposely kept me off, which you're lucky Zach. Cause guess what? In my hometown in Philadelphia, they did nothing but embarrass me and JR's hometown of Oklahoma. What did they do? They our home state. They, they would always embarrass JR in his hometown. Right. Mm -hmm. So I mean, leaving that... you off the show wasn't the worst thing they could do to you. Yeah, absolutely. I guess, but they, it is a message, and they just eat it with a smile, and that, and then it all boils over. So I think a great show don't tell thing would be, how can we get the message that's very bold and blatant without saying it? You know what I mean? Like uh, the Zack Ryder pool party thing would be a fucking easy. You gotta one. have you gotta have like players in the background that aren't even named or mentioned or, or conversed with. He's sitting there cutting a promo and all the WWE or NXT people are behind yeah, him he, yeah, like without even saying in, anything. Yeah, dude, having a good time. Like, da, 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 da. And it, he doesn't have to be straight faced to be like, so come on over. We're having a party. My place. Yeah, yeah, yeah bring the production crew. Don't, don't call me when you're a block away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing my pool party to AEW. So get ready, guys. It's, you know, like any kind of that shit. Like, and dude, they'll, but they'll come down on Chelsea twice as hard. But it's not like she wouldn't have a spot to jump ship right away anyway. So, uh, man, crazy, uh, you know, Cold War shit that could actually fucking increase ratings who would have thought <laughs> here's, a, here's a piece of advice we're kind of jumping around but here's a piece of advice and i was never one to to be loose with my money but man if anybody's listening and watching who's a wrestler in any of these companies right now and especially with the current events i hope you're applying some of the, the dave ramsey type rule, baby step rules or something else or just general common sense of knowing that you need to you know live on less than you make you need to save you need to invest you need to do all these things because quite frankly i know for a fact that you know you're not going to make that kind of money again we've been we've been really lucky to have be full-time 
profitable podcaster somehow, but you know, Zach is somebody and I think I like him a lot and we've always been very friendly, but when I see thousand action figures behind you and hopefully you've gotten more for free from the companies that have been paid for, but I've seen the, the videos where he and Brian Myers, him and Kurt Hawkins have, have paid for those, right? There's one that he paid five grand for. Five grand in a, you know, put towards a mutual fund or a stock with dividends that, that'll get you money that did stuff I bought when I was in WWE that I still hold on to that pays me a dividend every quarter. The only the, way that the, they would get money from that now is if, A, he became a megastar and then they put it up at auction someplace because now he's the owner of it that increased the value of it and you're buying mm-hmm. it from him. But that is, <laughs> there's maybe three buyers in the world who might buy that, Tony Khan being one of them. But like, uh, the, there's only a few that might bid on that, but w- why is he going to want to put that up from his collection until he's old and gray? But like, it's it's just like, got to get rid of get rid of some childish things. I'm all down with things that bring you joy. So if it is, I can't tell a guy how to spend his money. But like, you know, judgment wise, so for some people, that's a that's a weird weird thing. We're like, God damn, a fucking you spent five grand on a piece of plastic because it was just a rarity. When there's, I look at that, I look at this spool of plastic right there, and I go, Oh, there's a dollar thirteen total, <laughs> and people are paying five grand for it. You know, I. Once again, I just look at it like it's something he could go to AEW and Tony Khan could give him a bunch of money and maybe that's the money he'll save knowing that, oh, wow, I was out of work and independent wrestling is completely destroyed right now. Who knows when that'll come back? It's it's just something like my our paranoia in a lot of ways, I think, has now been not so mocked or anything on a bunch of different levels. You know, I was always I was always very paranoid and I still look at the money that I may have spent on houses or a car here and there and said, ah, I didn't lose money. I lost money on the car just because they depreciate like crazy. But I'm, I'm very stringent and very structured now with the way I, I move forward with money. Because mm-hmm. it's just man, $15 salads or going out to Disney and doing this and that or living. I don't think that's for total divas. We thought it was, but I think all the roster is really living that lifestyle now. They are. I mean, you know, not to say a guy can't do whatever with his family is making it, but a lot of them got the the Disney full time pass. They go every weekend with the families and and whatever. Like that's just the life they're living. And then when that's going to be taken away, and that ninety days runs out, dude. And as they get older, and as more and more uh, bumps are punched on their card, you know, like. Pfft. Every one of those, the price goes up, but they're still living, living in a, you better snap out that fucking dream, baby. <laughs> there's one, there's one person in business that made like, like ask me, cause I, I think because I live in an apartment right now, Yeah. like I'm looked at like, man, like I'm at a halfway house because I lost yeah. all my money and I'm dude, but I'm going to, I, I just not going to name names, but was like, Hey man, are you doing okay? Like you're almost a 49 year old guy. You're living in an apartment. You're married. Your home gym's bursting at the seams. Like, why don't you just, why don't you just buy a house? It's an investment. You can sell it for more. The housing prices are going up this and that. And I go, yeah, yeah. So what are you trying to say? Like, do I want to be house poor? Do I don't have that fancy house that most of the people here in the, the Georgia area, especially in Atlanta, they have a house that looks great on the outside that isn't even furnished. And maybe the gas and electric get shut off every other month. You have a leased Mercedes or BMW, but when you hit that stoplight, people will say for three seconds, they aren't going to say, I really admire that person. They're going to look at you and say, fuck that person. I hope they, I hope they're broke in a month and they're jealous. Nobody ever ever happy for you either way. Yeah. So I tried to explain that, yeah, housing prices are what they are, but I refuse to go into any kind of debt. I believe in that. I know it, it wouldn't be possible anytime soon unless, you know, uh, they smarten up and they, I'm your assistant with the improv contract. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Absolutely. but I believe in the hundred percent down rule and everything I buy or trying to get a collaboration. So I don't have to pay for it. And if you think I haven't emailed out building companies and other places to put the home gym in, if you think I haven't emailed Elon Musk at Tesla to try to get a car for review, 
Why not? Ghost phone from John McAfee today. Ghost phone. So, you know, I know we're kind of like speaking on these different terms rather than the headlines, but you know, you, people have to realize in these times with this pandemic with 38 to 40% unemployment, potentially higher than that. Mm -hmm. Like when, when you have to live a certain way, you know, what I'm looking at is, yeah, I'll buy a house, but it's going to be six months after the moratoriums on the mortgages and the rents. When people start, that bill is going to come due. People think they have free mortgages forever right now, or they're not going to be six months backed up when the banks finally come for you. Yeah. And then when they all had the adjustment and the correction happens, you might have 7% interest as opposed to three and a half, 3.85 right now. I don't give a fuck about the interest because I want to pay the principal off as quickly as possible. And that's what I explained. You have a, you have a $300,000 mortgage, right? Yeah. Well, my payments are only 1200 a month. Yeah, but your property taxes are going to go up every year. And you live in a place and you paid for that and $300,000 loan, what if that house turns into a $140,000 assessment and you try to get out from under it like in 2008? I know that has nothing to do with wrestling. No, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to, to how I can capitalize. Welcome on to the Dave scheme. Ramsey show. I'm uh -huh. moving to Franklin, Tennessee, dude. I just believe in, I tell myself this every day. I listen, I watch Dave Ramsey videos and other people, not the, not the gurus, but the people telling you just don't buy stupid things. Just save your money. Just do this and that. Have a plan, have an emergency fund. What I do now and what I do from, from the time I met my wife on, is everything is for her and everything to a smaller extent is for the cats or anybody else that I love you, Sal, pop it on everybody I care about that I can help out in every other way. There's a mm. saying that Dave Ramsey says, you know, live like no one else now. So later on you can live and give like no one else. That's a pretty good saying. Normal, normal sucks. Being pro yeah. wrestlers, being professional podcasters, we know that normal is not the way to go. It doesn't <laughs> no. work for us. Yeah, it's tough. And when you think about that financially, it really makes a lot of sense. It really does. Mm. Am I rich by no means? No, but thank God. Thank God that, and then Paige, did, you know, we get around called DD me, but, you know, for the longest time, that guy has said, you know, it's not what you make, it's what you save. When I met him in the 90s, he said that. And that really did stick with me. You make a bunch of money. I didn't make a ton of money in WWE. I didn't make anywhere close to probably what Zack Ryder make it, made at the end. But I saved every dime I could. And I continue to do that making, dude, we don't make much money. But don't we save it and try to monetize whatever we can to convert that to, to double and triple. and Everything, have, everything that is a expenditure is a reinvestment. Yeah, but you're not saying, "Hey, I'm spending a ton. I'm spending a ton of money because it's a write-off." Like I used to hear, "We're spending, we're staying in a hundred fifty-dollar hotel because it's a write-off." No, that's not an investment. This computer, which I choked on buying after two years, is an investment. And what did I do? Hey, Russo, uh, I'm gonna start making. I'm gonna start helping out making clips. You, me, Ted. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put this computer to work so I can get my friggin' money's worth out of it Absolutely. or anything else. So 100%. I'm wondering what the chat room's saying. They're like, stop, stop, stop with the. And they said, "Welcome to Mad Money with old man." <laughs> Welcome to Mad Money with Mike Mana, <laughs> quadruple M. Um, you need to talk to uh, Rat Salad Review's wife and get her spending uh, in order there. But no, I mean, this is it. This is what locker room should be as well. I told you, I'm not too worried about headlines all the time. We got some to get to, but. People need to hear this, especially if this was a wrestling locker room. There'd be people listening over the fucking lockers in the next bench over being like, what's he talking about? How to make money, save money, do what I should do instead of well, going out and buying a Hummer they H would, fucking they, two. They would idolize Ric Flair's uh, way of living. Yeah, how's Ric that? Ric Flair's working? financial habits. How's and that I mean, He can out? hate it. What's that? How's that working out? Hey, but you know what? He It's a free country. Well, as of 903 on June 11th, it's mm. free, but he can do whatever he wants. I respect his decision, but I respect, I respect my, my decisions, my future a lot more. And I care about my future, my decisions a lot more and the future and decisions of the younger generation that I don't want to see them dead by 40 again, because yeah. they, 
didn't spend and then they become hopeless and drug addicts and other things or just feel like it's too much and God forbid do something to themselves, which could be a real possibility with all these people out of work. Yeah. How many hell, yeah. more releases are coming, right? Oh, absolutely, dude. Uh, always. <laughs> what's uh, up with the Bellas? Why, like, uh, what's really important in the world? Uh, the Broken Prophets uh, asked, Stevie, you look great. What webcam are you using? I'm using a Sony A6500 DSLR with a Cam Link 4K, which basically turns your DSLR or, you know, the professional cameras into a webcam. If you have a Canon webcam or even a Panasonic, now there's free software to plug it in over USB to turn those into a webcam. So I have a I have a, a 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. So the one point, 16 millimeters of the width, it's a wide lens. So it's pretty close, but you can see how wide it is. 1.4 is the aperture, meaning how much blur in the background and light it's letting in. So that's why it looks better than the FaceTime camera. Nice, nice. Tech and, tech and money, tech and money show. <laughs> tech, money, money. Um, Nick, all this And recent- by the way, I didn't pay for the cam link because cam link... Uh, Elgato sent it to me as for review. So if you want a path to getting a bunch of different things, start a YouTube channel, start a podcast, start a blog, start all three, start working with companies and start having them trust you with the products and be an information source. You'd be surprised at how much you can monetize it. And if not monetize it, get a bunch of free stuff. Once you get one, it's easier to get the next ones. That's, mm-hmm. that, that's just getting that first one. Um, the one, and, and if you're here, the Hameen media group, you should know that, that you're part of a, a community. So if you need help with following, it's about building those partnerships with other community members who might be trying to raise their game too. And it's tip for tack quid pro quo did the same thing with voices of misery, did the same thing with uh, Brent Logan when he was with uh, his crew, same thing with rat salad reviews. You know, we keep going down the list, uh, brosters and, and everybody else. So that's, it just takes time, takes grind. Um, Nick Aldis recently released, uh, released, uh, WWE superstar, uh, WWE superstar as a dream NWA title opponent. Uh, the one that may surprise people, but I really have faith and could really make magic with is Joe Hennig, Curtis Axel in WWE. And I'm excited just talking about it, but Joe and I attended Harley races camp together in 2007. I think it was, we were all like, that's Kurt Hennig's kid. Wow. He just started wrestling and he's such a natural. I couldn't believe it. I was just so envious. This perfect footwork, and he takes these perfect crisp flat back bumps, perfect drop kick. I was like, I've been doing this for four years, and I can't do it like that. You know, for me, I just don't understand why and how that was never taken advantage of, but in our world, you can bet your ass that's how we do it. Uh, We would take you on the ride and tell you every part on the story, and you get emotionally invested, not to say that we would exploit any of those things, but if anyone saw us, the build towards me and Cody and the emotional the emotion attached to that because of Dusty and because of what it meant to Cody, it's genuine, it's real. What it genuinely meant to Cody to get a shot at the title and what it meant to his family. I think a lot of the same elements exist with Joe Henny, except with Joe, it's a real point to prove with him. I think two guys are on the same age with very different paths, but sort of converging at the same point in time with the ultimate prize on the line, uh, but both with real significant points to prove. I think it's pretty hard to go wrong with that. Boy, he's got a goddamn great point there. You want to talk about a guy, not just who was marginalized, who never got to fly close to the sun, even like a Zack Ryder did for a couple times, or a Liv Morgan, uh, you know, uh, that they didn't do fuck all with Mr. Perfect's kid in the right way. The, the B team, the fucking, the impersonations with Hogan and do just brutal. What a miss an absolute miss every time with him. Well, well, let's examine this. Why? Like why? I never heard anything. How about Bulldog? Why Bulldog's kid too? Uh, Harry Smith. Why? How do you miss? How do you miss? And why is he still not any place as a fucking absolute champ, world beater of everybody? Because he's fucking legit as it gets right now. I don't know, but what do you think? I mean, I'd be interested. You know, everybody seems to be speaking. Is 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 um Axel? Uh, I hate to say Axel. Joe Henning. He's released. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't, I can't even say why. Cause he, I remember, I think I met him when did Kurt Hanning going to the hall of fame. I don't know if I was with the company or not. I know I met Cody, met Cody when I was still with WWE, when he spoke and did that speech and that kind of 
put him a little bit on the map with the company. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I met Joe when I don't know if I was there when Kurt Henning got inducted. If I, if I was, I remember meeting him uh, somewhere and it, thought the same thing he just had that look even the little eyebrow and the half smirk that Kurt used to do and other things he had the look it's almost like the the power of the promoter the power of the god complex of we should do it we absolutely it's the easiest decision to do it but because we're in power we're not going to do it we're just not going to do it it's our call the fans probably called for it too and said it's a natural yet they at every turn they never gave him, I think, do you think, here's a, here's a conspiracy theory. Punk was one of his biggest advocates, but Punk also had a ton of heat in the office, even though they had to push him. Do you think that was their way of getting back at Punk by totally marginalizing what somebody he, you know, it's hard for one of the boys to speak up for another one. So for him to actually publicly do that, do you think that was the kiss of death? I think you could definitely, I forgot all about that, but it, it, uh, it absolutely could be that. And then once you're stuck in doing comedy, that's how they see you. And then to break out of it and they don't give a shit. I don't know, man. Like that to me is nuts. Why in every week in the writer's room, I'd be just fucking blasting people. We have Mr. Perfect's kid there. What the fuck? And the other part of that too, that I always thought was, is uh, Ziggler's so good. He moves like perfect. He, Dolph Ziggler idolizes Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Mr. Perfect. That's the three wrestlers his whole fucking thing is based on. And he gets it and uses each individual thing that he takes from them, and he makes it into his own, so it's kind of disguised. Sometimes you see it. But uh, plus, he looked like perfect. So I think that played into it, but I was always thinking to myself, if you're going to have a gruff, rough-looking son of Mr. Perfect angle who doesn't look like the bleach blonde, you know, swat the gum type shit. And, and heel was doing all that. Ziggler was doing all that. That's where you bring Joe in, in the reality. Like you stop ripping off my fucking old man. You're not, I'm the guy you're not. And then you have him work like stone cold, not like, uh, you know, Mr. Perfect would maybe get the perfect plexus in or something like that. But like, there was money easy right there between those two. If you want to talk about something, people would have looked back and seen some incredible matches. I can't believe they never pulled the trigger on that, dude. That would have been the way to get him right in the mid card. That would have been a two year intercontinental title, like legendary thing from like how it was back in the day, man, that, that was the biggest miss. I think AEW could really have something with an identity uh, here. Cause they got Arn, they got Tully, uh, they got Jake, and then they have the second generation people, and you know they can have a core of second generation. They tried with, like with like you have Cody and you get Teddy. One time. They tried with Teddy, uh, you know, million dollar man's kid. I mean, they tried to do that with legacy, and it just wasn't there, right? But the legacy that they could do in AEW is completely the old school way, much like sure. the NWA will probably do with that as well. He can be Joe Hennig. He can just be, and they can address. They, they can do everything that WWE did. They, mm. it's not stale. They let's never play. did it in the first place. Let's play a little game. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna be stiff. Uh, who? Here comes Joe Hennig. Here comes the revival. Here comes uh, Broski, uh, and probably his partner Ryder and Hawkins. Here comes. Well, give me one other future endeavor. Eric Rowan, possibly. And Brian Cage. Now pick three current active roster guys in AEW that are gone by September. Because those guys are coming in and they're bigger money. Yeah, well, I mean, this isn't a decision that, you know, you got to want. I don't know who's under contract either. Yeah. We're apparently less than we, we were made to believe in the beginning, correct? That's much can be assumed. I, I would assume, I would say so. I'd say probably the librarians, both yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. That's an easy one, uh, just because. Um, Jack, and what, Jack Evans, another skeleton guy, gone. Well, they would go back to Mexico because yeah. I don't believe that. I don't even believe that the librarian people are under contract. Me neither. I don't think they are either. So they would probably just stop booking people. They wouldn't re see. That's that's the thing. We don't release anybody. 
but there won't be bookings available because of COVID and whatever other, you know, they, they'll give some kind of narrative. The tougher ones would probably be, cause I don't think they would be, but you'd probably get rid of jungle boy and Marco stunt and put Luchasaurus on a singles thing. Cause mm-hmm. I don't think, and I think even taking Luchasaurus out of the mask would probably be a good idea. Turn him heel against, I'm, I'm doing creative now, but I'm just saying what I would do with Joe Henning would be got to grow the hair out. You got to look completely different. You mm-hmm. can get your body in a in a different state. If you want to get in shape, that's better. Or if you want to look bigger, you want to get thicker. You have to do what um, Adam Rose did and, and like go. Whoa, that's Adam Rose. I don't remember him looking like. You have to completely reinvent yourself for, before we even put your face or your body in front of a camera. I think Eric Rowan and the other guys should do the same thing. I think Eric Rowan should turn around and say, "Man, I'll be Eric Rowan or be something, but I need to." have a different look, maybe grow my hair out, maybe do something completely different. Get a spider tattooed on the back of your skull. <laughs> that spider might debut soon. <laughs> Who knows what it might happen. <laughs> you, to, you look out for the baby face murderers in WWE. <laughs> I mean, do you think, here's a, here's a, a more interesting question too. Who would they take in that group of people you mentioned? And who would they uh, say they, like, like? Major, major brothers. I mean, Cody and, Zach are almost best friends. They were posting on Instagram together, barbecuing, all that shit all the time. Okay, so, but is that the best? It, it, I don't begrudge anybody because we've gotten sure. places because people like us. They got to they got to take Harry Smith eventually. There's no way you can keep leaving him on the shelf like that. There's there's just tons of money written there. Joe Hennig. So there's four. Um, probably Rusev. He'll, Rusev yeah. will do something in Impact, and then he'll show up there. Um, I don't know if they'll take the good brothers of Bullet Club, but I imagine they'll politic their way in there eventually in another year or two. Um, and then they'll stop at Impact to try to get themselves back they'll over. Get a, again. They'll get a five date thing at Impact for fifteen grand or some shit like that. Um, That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money if you want. If you're <laughs> used to making money, we talked about it with Impact. Impact doesn't really have any money, and if they came in at their fifteen hundred dollar a night rate, or they paid them according to a contract, what's that going to do to the locker room? What's this going to do to the locker room if anybody doesn't get released and they're looking at, you know, look at Pepper Park, somebody I think that definitely deserves to, to have an opportunity even on his own without the other guy. But to, together as a team, they look really good. Yeah. What if they're looking at, you know, they just got laid out by the Revival. They're going to have a match with them. Are they really going to? They lost Revival last really night. They lost, they lost to him okay, last I, night in the opener. Okay. The, these are guys that have worked hard, especially Pepper. Yeah. The, the other guys worked hard to, to go from a mainstream musician into the wrestling world, which is not super easy to juggle those two things. And now they split off Allie and she's with QT Marshall as his side piece of pussy, dude. Like they just, they split her off from Butcher and the Blade. She's no longer the bunny. She's Allie. She wears, last night she was wearing a, uh, a, uh, uh, Inner, whatever the the family jacket was on, that was what the promo was about. And QT Marshall being obsessed with uh, getting some new ass on the side, and his head's not in the game. That was the promo with Dustin, Brandy, and uh, and them too, dude. Like, so so now where Penelope uh, Ford and uh, Saban come out and they put over, oh, they're engaged. Uh, if you didn't know that, there, yeah, that's it. Like whatever, and. They put over the reality of the situation, but now well, the people well, who are back ma- up a second. Who is it? You talking about the, the the girl that was with Joey Janela? Yeah, she's engaged to Saban, dude. She's a she's outshining them all right now. She's one of the top female stars. She's sexy and she looks good. But yeah, they were that that was what they tried to do that storyline way back when, like that you know the, that was the heat between them, and they just dropped that too. Um, so now the people who are married are now playing side piece in a fictional storyline while we're trying to get over these reality things on TV and the, you're insulting the intelligence of your crowd. Not a good look, bro. Wow. They are doing almost the same. I mean, and everybody knows that pepper and her are together. Like together they're, they're, they're married. married. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. I didn't know they got married. I'm just oh, saying they, they, yeah, they've yeah. been together forever, forever. dude. So, and on TV from impact. So like, why are they, why are they doing these, these left turns out of nowhere? I have no idea. Like bro. it worked. I mean, it worked with the three of them together. You had the two guys. You had the guy that was the kind of pretty boy Jack guy. You got the big fucking rough 
looking killer. She's the knockoff the of the sexy chick from Japan, right? Like it's all right there. And Butcher and Blade have won zero matches on TV, bro. So man, this guy, I he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. So one good. of the most patient guys. He got screwed over as Braxton Sutter and Impact. He never got he got over, but he didn't get the money. That's what I assumed, because that's what always happens there throughout mm -hmm. time and history. Then he comes here. And it's like, holy shit, the Blade and the the Blade and the Butcher was an indie act that we're actually able to bring in its whole context on the TV. They're letting us creatively get over. Mm -hmm. The handcuffs are off. We got ourselves over. Now that we got over, we're going to put over WWE rejects and you're going to take the girl from us. And okay. now they, they don't dress in black. They dress in white like Los Barique was, and it doesn't make any sense, dude. Uh, the the his partner though did a really probably one of his best matches. I mean the revival looked great. It was a good ma match to open, and we'll talk about it on Light the Fuse here in a while. But like, dude, I just like things like that. I just like how do you not see that this is absolutely the wrong way to go by splitting her off to do that? And they are such nice people that they'll just go along because they've been working their asses off on the indies for a decade to get these jobs. So they're gonna do whatever is fucking handed to them, you know. And that gets and and talent coming in or talent that that's been there, Cody and and the Bucks, whoever else, the Tony Khan, they have to know. They they're in the locker room. They're the, they're they're wrestlers, not Khan. Well, he'll be world champions. Yeah, he'll be up. But they have to know what that does to morale because they've all been buried in the past that way. How do you forget that stuff? How do you have a life? Unless you know and you do it anyway, and then everybody's brother in each other and you know, lying, and now it's now it's basically any other wrestling locker room. It's not a fan. You know, do you get what I'm saying? hundred percent. Like when you started again, everybody grin fucking you. That's what we used to call yeah, yeah, grin yeah. fucking you. They're like, hey, buddy, it's great to see you. And you're like, this motherfucker's ruining my life. I'm losing money. Like that is the that is the thing right there. By the way, we're banned from AEW. I just yeah, call it right now. Yeah, yeah, talk okay. about it. That's fine. We got two CW reunions coming and I'll see them all there. So <laughs> nice guys. Finish well, Conroy right, writes the show in 15 minutes. And apparently from what we're talking about, that could be true. Cause no thought goes into this. I just don't, I don't get it, man. Like, uh, they're, they're all so talented. And then just to, to beat something down that had money written on it and nobody steps up. To say, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute here. If there and there's no there's no rhyme or reason why she splits off from them. It's just they're in the crowd one week and we cut to them and it looks like there's a little love interest. What? That's weird. Come back second week. Okay, we do it. Uh, all right. Third week, they're making out. Now, now the fourth week, fucking, she's just in the uh, family gimmick with them. Okay. One last thing. Nightmare Collective. You've, you've talked about talent not sticking. We just talked about Zach Ryder. Talked about me in the past talent not standing up for their business in wwe there is that institutional fear because of proof of their actions from you standing up for your business this company was supposed to be different there's supposed to be an open door policy to cody and the bucks and con and whoever else is in creative it's supposed to be a collaborative effort everybody is supposed to be a family so whoa why didn't pepper the, the other guy, Andy, complains his, his name on Twitter. I don't know his real name. But him, all three of them and Allie go and say, this act is working. This is all good. Even when they wanted to put him in white, they're like, why would, why isn't there a conversation about any of this stuff? If you're going to do white, you do blood splatter. Get the thing and then get a thing of red paint. And whoosh, whoosh. Well, we're, we're past that now. It nah, should have been day it, yeah. one. But why is there not a conversation of, Let's hash this out and figure out what are you guys thinking? What what is the the what's the long game with this of doing these moves? Is there heat now? Are you playing old school wrestling politics with heat that you're not figured in now? You're not one of our boys. We don't dislike you, but we're not in love with you either. So we're gonna just whatever we want to do with you. Uh, I aside from Somebody really wanting to bang Allie and get back at Pepper for some reason, which I can't imagine why that would happen. I couldn't find the roadmap. Get back at what? Get, like to get Pepper and her away from each other to cause some real friction in their relationship in real life. 
I can't see like somebody wants to get with her. I can't see any other roadmap of why they would go this way and just split her off with no reason aside from backstage that somebody is like, dude, she's cute. I want to get with her and like, let's cause friction between them in real life and see if like that. Have you seen that before? I've seen it before. Okay. So I'm not splitting I'm not brand, just, different brands, different companies, other things, releasing one, keeping the other, pushing one on the road, the girl, and keeping the guy at home. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. So that I'm not trying to just start some shit because the creative decision on that is so bad that I feel it has to be something else outside of the purview of what it is. And somebody who's buddies with somebody might have gotten their ear and they're like, fuck it, I'll do it. I don't give a fuck, bro. They're two good people, man. Why would you want to do that to them? Because they're two good people. And there's a lot of not good people in this business. Um, This was interesting. Uh, Dustin Rhodes announces plans to open his own wrestling school. 32-year professional wrestling and veteran of all elite star uh, Dustin Rhodes has announced he'll be opening his own school, likely close to his home in Texas. He says, my wrestling school is in its pla- is in its planning stages. I always dreamed of having one. Going to make that a reality. Can't wait. He also included the hashtags Rhodes Wrestling and Texas. So, dude, that'd be an unbelievable mentor uh, to uh, start and study under and obviously near – in AEW light, like it's going to be the feeder for AEW. Absolutely. So if you're really serious about this fucking business and you're not a complete psychopath and you really want to show how it's done, uh, I would get a hold of Dustin Rhodes and go, Hey dude, I'll fucking bring a tent and stay in your backyard and help you build your fucking thing from the ground up if you want me to. And, uh, you know, I want to, I'm serious about this shit and I want to learn from the best, uh, you know, that there is in this business. (laughs) <laughs> you're if you went and did that for two years and, and showed that you want it, that's the same as going to ovw but he's just trying to get his started you go and do that for two or three years bro you're guaranteed a spot it's, if you're not a fuck face stalker weirdo you know so you're just a carny who really wants to do this shit that's not a bad option in my opinion no i agree i mean i i don't know why he didn't do it sooner he said texas i wonder i thought he was in florida i guess he's in Probably in Texas now. Yeah, he's he's got a big ranch there. Uh, when I good for him. Yeah. I mean, I would do the land store model, and then if people want to pay rent, you have a separate living facility, so they're there all the time, and you can have people come in for uh, you know a two month period. And wasn't Atlanta's like two months, mm-hmm. like semesters type mm-hmm. thing? That would be excellent. Yeah, get a and, trailer yeah. or two and put out on the back, and you know, guys can. You can have the company store there if you want, where they're paying dues plus they're paying rent if they want to. Instead of having to go get an apartment, they can live in on the property for a hundred bucks a month as well with chores or whatever the fuck they got to do, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will be the one, and yeah, you know, not not many people are the type of person that Dustin is either. He will teach people, he will coach them, and he'll he'll make it fun. That's what I mean. Without without being easy on you, he'll make it fun. Mm-hmm. I've, I I love being around him. I loved working him. He's one of those guys that I could work every single night and never get tired of it. Like that's what the business is supposed to be about. And to have somebody available to teach like that, and I would say current wrestlers that might think, was I broken in the right way or was I taught the right way? And if you even have that question, you probably weren't broken in the right way. Mm-hmm. Might be good for you to get in there. I'm sure people, current wrestlers might want to go learn and pay dues under him just to get the in at AEW, which wouldn't be a a stupid idea either to get your face like recognized by doing that. Takes a, this is an ego driven business. If you're in the business two years, you think you've been in it forever. Mm -hmm. You think you graduated from wrestling school, which never happens. You don't even graduate from life. You learn every day, but to go hat in hand to Dustin and say, listen, I went to school. Now, without burying the person to tell you, I went there, but I'm still not very good. I need to start over. I need to be, I need for you to teach me the right way. I don't know a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. Like you said, here's my tent. I'm going to live here. I'll pay rent. I don't care. I need, I need this. Mm -hmm. I don't see him turning you away. Me neither. Uh, You know, and, and also, as a finishing school, say you do come from OVW or Monster Factory and you really want to get to where you're going to go, a four-month dedication with him 
in a turnaround, I'm sure would take your game from, you know, a B plus player to like, really like, okay, I get it. I get it. And I'm over, I'm over prepared for the opportunity that lies ahead of me. That's how you want to be. Not, uh, I'll get in shape after I get signed three months from now. (laughs) It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Uh, backstage news on who produced NXT takeover backlot brawl. According to reports from wrestle stink, uh, the sources named uh, helped produce the Boneyard match for AJ Styles were the same that produced a backlot brawl. Um, it was Triple H, Jeremy Borash, and WWE Hall of Famer Michael Hayes. Yeah, the match took less than three hours to put together, although as previously reported, the taping session was pushed back until after midnight because of the weather. Uh, okay. <laughs> One of those I might uh, have a little trust in but the other two i don't see that vision it wasn't really filmed on film no it was good it was real good the dream the dream call match oh yeah it was filmed on film it didn't feel like film though well it's supposed to look like produced so it could have been just a adobe after effects filter you know to make it grainy and shit like that like it didn't feel like the boneyard match it didn't feel like uh it didn't feel like broken universe. It felt like it f- like Ronin or Heat or something like that. Like it felt like its own thing. I don't know. I I watched I watched it man, and I just felt like I don't know. I don't know why. I just remember my first impression was okay. maybe it was the lighting, maybe it was just the way it was put together. Maybe they shot it in thirty frames or sixty frames a second instead of twenty four. It just didn't feel cinematic. Is that the better word for it? I, it didn't feel mm-hmm. as cinematic as those and i don't think it was it was supposed to be but not to me it felt more like a scene from fast and furious so i i I, it's interesting to me that you you think it didn't work as well i thought it worked for what they want to do because their their universe isn't that far out and crazy and then he got his whatever they were saying um walking dead reference in when he rolled up in the car and how he was dressed and all that kind of shit i mean that was over my head because I don't watch that show. Um, but yeah. but there was enough in there to make it how it was and what it should have been. And then what I do believe with Hayes and Triple H being in on it is the going through the windshield as a fuck you to like him if he really did that windshield uh, damage that was claimed online. And then going over with the dick shot, obviously a, a fucking dick pic fucking thing, you know, the reference to what he's been doing online. And him going under and not over, I mean, uh, will fucking take him off TV until this heat possibly blows over. I, that that was a weird thing to me of like, what's the situation with that, you know? But there were ribs. What was the built windshield in. one thing? What Supposedly after that? this, you know, alleged uh, sexting scandal happened, that more information came out that there was something back in February where on videotape, I think it was in the NXT parking lot or someplace adjacent. Somebody just came up and smashed a fucking windshield and did damage on a car after a show. And allegedly it was somebody who was dressed like him. I don't know if they got his face or not, but like that, that was a thing that got swept under the carpet. This is all hearsay from the sheets. And so take it as you will. Um, but to have those spots in the match, that makes me believe Hayes and Triple H fucking put those in there as a, you know. <laughs> so they weren't really trying to do all 100% business for the for the match. They were trying to get their little ribs in still. <laughs> the, the, we didn't know that the fucking t-shirt was Sambo face makeup, I swear. <laughs> right? How many times, bro? Like, these guys are going to get... It's plausible deniability to some degree. There's got to come a point where you... I didn't mean to. I guess Hillary Clinton started that trend. If yeah. I didn't mean to. Didn't <laughs> and that's okay. It all was just coincidence. Uh, Wade Barrett reveals the instructions. Vince McMahon. Yeah, me. I gave him for his Nexus debut. Uh, Vince McMahon speaks to us. He says, okay, this is a big, huge opportunity for you guys. This is going to be big. We want to show you... We want you to go attack John Cena. And at the end of the show and smash everything up, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go wear these armbands with a little N on there. 
He didn't give us. They didn't give us a reason as to why we were where in the end. They did give us the name Nexus or anything like that, and didn't or they didn't give us the name Nexus. Put these on, Wade. You go down there, and everyone else join them. Smash everything up. I want you to rip the ring apart. I want you to trash the table. I want you to punch the security guards, punch the referees, punch Jerry Lawler, beat up Justin Roberts. How was that? Pretty accurate, you think? Yeah, and then. <laughs> but Ben said, choke him, choke him with his own tie. And then Daniel Bryan, when they go, oh, wait, no, wait, I've changed my mind. <laughs> like, when you already yeah. going down the ramp. Yeah, right, wait. So, wait, is there is there some kind of, like, rib with this N? And they just said they found a bunch of armbands with the letter N on it and just said, go out there. They had Eddie Guerrero. They they had the Eddie Guerrero Memorial armbands, but they got a bunch of them with N's that misshipped to them by some, for some reason, right? Oh, armbands. Or they got them and they just didn't have whatever and they, they put ends on them. We'll call them Nexus. We'll get rid of these goddamn armbands. I'll show them. And I bet in the storage there's a fucking pallet of Nexus armbands somewhere tucked away still. And that's why ben, uh, Vince wants to bring it back, right? right? That's why I wanted to bring it back. Yeah, goddamn. We've we got to get rid of these. You might, that's as simple as it is. It's not from a yeah. creative direction. They're all looking through the warehouse and they go... We got a bunch of these armbands. What are we going to have? Just bring it back. Bring it back put it yeah. up on WWE shop. They're old Zeus armbands. Uh, Wanda Dead says they just turned them on the side. Yeah, maybe it was, yeah, it was a Zeus armband. <laughs> it's just somebody, somebody that was dyslexic or somebody that had a bad Dead eye, like the, like the doctor and Cannibal. Zeus was make, no, Zeus was making it himself his crazy eye. <laughs> he stamped her sideways. God damn it. I think Shawn Michaels has become Zeus. I, I like that. Um, Matt Riddle reveals a storyline he hoped to have with Kurt Angle. Uh, he spoke about how he almost got a chance to work together on the main roster and revealed the storyline idea. I said, you know, bro, what crossed my mind originally with Kurt Angle, there's a management thing, but then like in my head, maybe just this is greedy me, but in my head, bro, when I see Kurt Angle, even if I'm like, I'm friendly with him, I know the money isn't beating up Kurt Angle. I was really hoping we were going to get uh, going to cost me the cage match, and then the bro was going to snap and beat up Kurt Angle, some deadlift Germans into an Olympic medalist from the Stallion. Uh, you tell me everybody at home wouldn't be like, no, he didn't just dump him on his head, because that's what I do. It would have been crazy. Not a bad idea to start the biz, but it seemed like Angle was going to be doing something, and then step back from it, so they're already playing hot and cold with him after they fired him, and he talked openly about depression and whatnot in the last year where he's just spinning his wheels backstage at WWE collecting a paycheck with a guy who was taking 80 Vicodins a day at one time. That's fucking the most dangerous game, you know, boredom and depression and, uh, extreme addiction leading to whatever you got to give this guy purpose, whether it's as a trainer, uh, you know, as a manager, as a division runner, as a GM where there's something real there, you just can't have, what's going on that's a recipe for disaster man no totally agree totally agree and i think uh that was what we laid out wasn't it yes not the exact thing that should have happened well but not yeah like no angle. riddle the money's in riddle and kurt or kurt as the dana white yes. booking these matches yes. with a a shoot division so i think he, there's probably a little bit of truth that this may have been the plan and then they they changed their minds so i think this matt riddle's kind of saying yeah for about a day they told me this was going to happen and we were going to have a program which this type of this type of match and that match he had with the kid in the cage is the kind of stuff you can have with little to no people and it translates because of the ultimate fighter it doesn't feel like empty arena wrestling mm-hmm it, it it's not perfect because crowd reactions are always going to be better, <clears throat> but you have some sort of level of reality and danger in these types of, of the MMA types of matches. Mm-hmm. So I think they're dumb for not introducing a division that can of guys. Cause then you will get UFC guys that can come and learn how to do a hybrid work shoot kind of like they did over in Japan where I think, K1, Pancrase, other one. Well, Pancrase seemed pretty fucking real. Not sure, but <laughs> but K1 was kind of a work. And then they even had mixed with Anoki with some MMA guys and other people. They're really, that's how the business, I think, could evolve into the next generation. 
Yeah. But you got to put Angle in there as the figurehead. I think is the Dana. They White all get sure. slimed at the end. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So him. Braun <laughs> comes out and flips the fucking uh, lion's den. It'd be great. Uh, Edge talks about uh, WWE's marketing of the greatest wrestling match ever prior to re- even ringing the bell, which is certainly a brave decision on WWE's behalf. When speaking with ESPN, uh, Edge admitted that he thought the idea was a joke at first and questioned if it was a wise decision to advertise in such a way. So I quote, he says, I just laughed because I didn't think it was serious, the 11-time world champ said. And then I realized fairly quickly it was. Then my reaction was, is this wise? Because anytime you say something's the greatest beforehand, you're setting yourself up for failure. I don't ever want to think that way. I need to think of the opposite of that. I can't control the court of public opinion. I need to do and be proud of the work that I put in. All I can do is take take it as if all this is just a bonus and in a weird way a compliment or it's a giant rib. I don't know. He knows. <laughs> One can only hope that it will go to the way that we talked about where Randy Orton makes a complete mockery out of it and turns it into like a hardcore <coughs> match and beats him up. And <laughs> it's anything but a wrestling match. It's the only way to save this this thing unless they really can pull it off, man. I mean, when it was a rip, wasn't this the Charlie thing? This is going to be the greatest wrestling match ever. And then yeah. all of a sudden, that's what it's billed as. The whole pay-per-view is built as that. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think him talking openly and like, it's going to be the greatest wrestling match ever. My two greatest stars. Yeah. Like him trying to pump it up and they just get hooked on these little fucking things that come out of the writers. What could we call this? Now, the greatest wrestling match ever? Yeah, I like it. I like it. With no reasons, hype, set up, why. Even the stuff with Christian this week wasn't the right business, in my opinion. They're, they've taken it out after we read that Road Dog stuff uh, on Russo brand. They're even taking it out of Orton and Edge's hands uh, to, like, make the beautiful art that they, they could put together. Well, they don't trust them yet. They haven't been in the business that long. They're getting there. They're they getting don't there. trust them yet. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, <laughs> dude, they're great. It's, you know what's funny is they should call Raw the longest wrestling matches ever. How's that? Because yeah. then we're like, okay, you lived up to that. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's Some of them are just – these 47 minute segments that bleed into one another are just so bad. Um, Becky Lynch shows off new look dedicates work out to George Floyd. I know it's a whatever big George and what they're doing, dude. But, and we talked pretty openly about on horseman last night with an objective, what look at the conspiracy stuff that's coming in surrounding it. And of course, everything has to be, you know, problem reaction solution lie hop my hop event propagandize whatnot so here we have i'm not sure who the people on the left are but we also have seth it's two couples seth and becky and uh somebody else um and they got their little board up there it says big floyd on top like 800 burpees and all this shit that then hashtag big floyd work out wod work out of the day and hashtag uh big floyd power cleans you know, just like, I don't know. You, in my opinion, you got to lay out during this kind of stuff, especially if you're a fucking celebrity as opposed to, but even if you lay out, they'll accuse you. Why aren't you? Which we saw the Ryan Barkin thing with the SJWs going after pro wrestling tees. Meanwhile, he's in the back making your fucking villains ink shirts by, you know, <laughs> as fast as he can make them the, while, while hoping his place doesn't get burned to the ground by some assholes because he didn't post a fucking black square on his Instagram to join the fucking crowd. That being said, this type of stuff, they do it if they want to, but I just don't see the value in it, especially now you're taking a movement, a Black Lives Movement thing with the whitest of white people and applying it to a daily workout motivation Instagram vanity post where they're all smiling. It's not a fucking event you smile about, (laughs) you know? Like, there's just a lot of, like, what the fuck. But then on the positive side... She did dye her hair strawberry blonde, and she has little to no makeup on in this, I think, unless it's just a flat base makeup. She looks beautiful, whether it's the pregnancy glow or what have you, dude. Like, probably the prettiest I've ever seen Becky Lynch's face in a post that should not exist. (laughs) And they're all sitting there with their shirt, well, not the girls, but the guys with their shirts off taking a knee. Like, ah, dude. I saw, I see the picture. What, What was that other part you were talking about? 
what's that so much to pull in you were talking about uh oh god ct that's all right you're talking about this whole thing with the picture the the I was gonna make a point about something. There was about something the big the Floyd room. stuff, like to me, like the smiling and and that. To no, that's that's like, yeah. Are okay. you talking the Ryan Bark and pro wrestling tease? No, yeah. What Black happened Square? with that? They, yeah, I'm sorry. What happened with that? So I didn't want to interrupt you, but I was gonna say back good. up a second. What what's going on? They they went at Barkin because he hadn't made an official statement about pro wrestling tease about the uh, you know the Floyd. Uh, killing and what was what and he wasn't right in there with everybody else uh doing making sure his instagram was up to date with a black square and a black lives matter hashtag and pro wrestling t stands without like so the sjw's that i'll support aew were waiting to be like what like we spent our money there we want to know we 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 want to know we're spending our money with a socially conscious like putting the pressure on him meanwhile he's legit in the back trying to run his business during covid making sure things are getting shipped out which he does have his staff on but i don't know if it's cut back furloughed or what and you know (laughs) boarding up the windows so it doesn't get fucking blasted and his own his own base turns on him bro like, what do you want to do? Shut down pro wrestling tees? So now the way of the, the AEW stars you love that are all the social conscious justice warriors are going to make n- way less money because that's what they depend on. You see how they eat their own? They just fucking will eat their own for no reason to, ah, echo chamber, ah, you didn't do it in time. You didn't put this up, so you're a fucking racist. Like, not saying anything and they they just light their own hair on fire dude it's the same as the fucking paid trump girl you know screaming into the sky after he got elected it's the same waiting for the queue if you watch the whole video and they're waiting for the queue but the queue is oh the time has passed within 12 hours on social media and they didn't put a square up guess who's a fucking closet racist we're going after him like that's in their mind what comes out these fucking delusional cocksuckers who just want a virtual signal who need a punch square right in the fucking mouth and then the weird backup things where it becomes a social trend for now we have four of the whitest white people who are on tv taking a knee doing a hashtag big floyd workout what is it 16 days 16 days after the guy's murdered in the fucking streets as a vanity metric for likes dude that is that is fucking twisted in my mind if you think that's a good idea bro and they'll be like we're using our celebrity to to spread a socially conscious message that's what we're doing what's socially conscious and what's respectful is staying small and shutting the fuck up and letting the people who are really hurting have their time and their message and retweeting their shit. That would show maybe you stand at some solidarity, but like, dude, that leaves a bad taste in my mouth, bro. Well, I'm not going to sit here and let you, uh, denigrate the consistent efforts of, uh, Seth Rollins during black history month as the spokesperson, because you know, Titus O'Neil, you know, he was he was busy that day in the same building doing something else. I didn't put a camera in his face or Mark Henry's. It was Seth Rollins. So this is this is on, you know, this is on brand for him and her. Yeah. This is there's a guy I watched. I just the video started coming up in my YouTube feed. Officer Tatum, Brandon Tatum. Okay. Former police officer, also a black man and speaks out very, you know, long lines like Candace Owens and other, this is the funny part too, is there's some of the most like him, Candace Owens and a few other people that are speaking out on YouTube and on social media are hated because this officer is given real stats of certain things. And the whole story that we tried to talk about on the horsemen, Mm -hmm. which like, this is just two guys fucking probably hated each other, you know, from who had, a beef, right? Isn't that what kind of even the family of George Floyd is saying? Yeah, well, they worked together for what uh, some have said 13, some, some have seen 17 years in, as security in a nightclub. And the lady came out in front and tried to go, I don't think they ever knew each other. It just was a coincidence and whatnot. Meanwhile, there's money laundering and possible human trafficking and counterfeiting going through the club and cocaine meth ecstasy whatever else while this chick is the adriana from sopranos figurehead meanwhile 
there's way big ties in, in uh, anybody who's worked security, especially Sal and Papadon, go, fuck that, bro. Inside, outside, you know everybody. That's your job as security, where they are at that time. There's no way these guys working together for over a decade, 10 plus years, that they didn't know. And that's how Floyd, the cops got called. This cop got called who worked with him because he got busted spreading around fucking fake cash counterfeit cash and he waited for the cops to get there and then this went down so dude through the coincidences come on b like that that was in the early moments it was a sick fucking cop with his neck on a black guy's throat now we've got a b3 that you can go down a list of things that need to be answered couple debunked yes but there's some things that are like not the original story again, whether it's Las Vegas, whether it's Sandy Hook, whether it's fucking whatever. And we look at it with a meticulous eye. It just is not adding up. And this guy's in the Bull Society or Black Masons. And, you know, here we are. Dude. Well, I heard you are. and Sal going back and forth. And when you said it, it's not, a, you know, when you start peeling back and asking questions or looking at how things connect, it's not just the plain old, you know, cop killing of a black man. Yeah. Why do they create the conspiracy theories with all these questions? Yeah, you know like I, mean? I did that as a rhetorical thing, not to belittle it. Can't we just have a good, uh, an old fashioned cop killing of a minority? Does why does there got to be a Freemason, a fucking money laundering, the mayor's involved? History yeah, like why <laughs> can't we just have the old? Can't we get back to that? Like, no. I mean, obviously, I don't want that, but it's just the fucking absurdity of it all bro the abs absolute absurdity and well, in, in 16 um, days we go from that with a massive conspiracy and it's now been popularized as the workout of the day burpees of the fucking day bro well maybe this is a good segue to some more bad stuff that i heard you talking about last night that's pretty close to your heart and i'm sure it hurts you a lot because you literally mm. said that last night it does hurt me. uh the second city stuff which is basically chicago as well you're talking about the virtue signaling. You're talking about different things. And you have a first, no degrees of separation. You're right there in the, the thick of it for years, witnessing or not witnessing more accurately these things that people, to quote you or Sal, on high are now supposedly saying that it's there's a systemic problem with the scene there, with the improv scene at Second City. Yeah. Um, I mean – Top, top performers, 18 of them who have deals and are on TV or producers or directors or writers or performers, HBO, Comedy Central, NBC, uh, all penned a letter, you know, pretty much saying there will be a, there is a witch hunt. We have the names. You will go through and do an investigation and, and fire these people. They demanded it because the, they're, they are the ones who help build the stages. They use that term. We build the stages like second city was built on the, the fucking back of blacks. You know what I mean? When these people all came from outside to the Mecca of comedy, paid their money to learn the craft on the stages. And yes, yeah, second city does turn around and pimp you out and do shows. Same as OVW. I wrote to one of the girls before this letter came out, I saw her saying that. And I was like, I just don't understand. I'm not trying to pass judgment here. I don't understand because, and maybe that's, I don't want to say a white privilege or blinders thing, but at improv, we're all trying to get back to the heart of our youth and relate to each other. And do some people make some stupid moves that are racially insensitive when they yes and because they don't have, um, more than a stereotypical view from movies because in their little cul-de-sac in Wisconsin, they didn't have any black kids. Maybe, maybe they go to a boys in the hood reference and that offends somebody who's an African American, you know, graduate from Northwestern who is a philosophy major that they have to be pigeonholed time and time again. So I get their frustration of wanting to incorporate more educated and, and higher level thinking as opposed to, being the butt end of a ghetto joke. However, our job as comedians is what's to echo in society. And if that's the thing, then their focus is in the wrong spot. It's an easy witch hunt for them. And as they came over the top to fucking demand this with LGBTQ management, executives, there is a player who I have a lot of respect for, Anthony LeBlanc, who's been named an executive there, African-American. We actually started an improv 
in Chicago the same like month and week. We were in a lot of classes together 20 years ago. So he's put his grind in. So I don't have a problem with anybody who's at the master level taking those spots based on an executive qualified position. He's a highly intelligent guy. But it's going to be looked at as an affirmative action hire, and there's going to be resentment towards them. And then what they further go to demand is a upper level of people from BIPOC. I'm not sure what it stands for, but it's, you know, I'm sure a diversity hire, you know, group that's backed with big money. And that those people need to become the new top people there. And that anyone that is considered misogynist has done microaggressions like what do you define that is? You could you could fucking put that on anybody now and fucking go. Your career's over with, because we want to have a fucking drag queen, uh, you know, Latino, whatever, just to make sure we have the right view going forward. Meanwhile, Harold Ramis, Bill Murray, Steve Carell, Chris Farley, uh, Tim Meadows, <laughs> uh, Key and Peel, all of these people are the ones that came before you. And all these people I'm talking about who penned this letter, they act like they're the ones who fucking set the tone to get to where they are. If they didn't come through Second City in Chicago and pay their dues on the stages that those people became superstars off of, they wouldn't have jobs on Veep, a fucking writing for uh, Seth Meyers. And right, like, I don't understand where they're, them now making money and not that they're not funny and, and unbelievable performers, because they absolutely are. But they're they're also pushing for minority hires that are going to take the spots of people who've put their dues in because now they just want a social justice change. And then the other part of that, too, is there 18 people got killed on the South Side on Sunday, 16 of them black. And this is where their focus is because it's a fucking safe thing. And I just don't see how they feel so miffed and fucked over when they're all, they all got contracts based off of coming through a system that is a legacy system. And now they want to tear that down and change it because, and maybe I don't understand that they do feel some kind of way and that what that feels like to be pimped into a scene every time where you're in jail, you're the gangster, you're the fucking, or you're Barack Obama because like, you know, just because of stereotypes. I totally get their argument that way. But now I see top people in comedy who have been at the top and deserve a shot and are right there are now retweeting their pictures, their headshots, that statement, knowing but not knowing because they want to save face that now their spot is going to be probably gone because an affirmative action hire is going to get their fucking spot in comedy and they're giving it up willingly in public. But wait till that really fucking stings in two or three years when you lose things because, Oh, this is written for this character, but yeah, let's turn her into an Asian girl or we're going to turn her, turn that female character into a gay Latino man because we need hires to fill that because we did it. And we know now that the script isn't as funny. And we know that this performer is only a three year performer as opposed to the 10 year, uh, white woman performer that was there, you know, who's, who this was really written for. Now we have to do all this inclusion and fuck up our art piece because, uh, see where I'm going, dude. Like, I yeah, just don't spin it, man. My I don't understand spinning. how they don't see that they're going down this road. And it's, it's pretty fucking hard for me to stomach because I don't understand. It's not that I'm against it. I go to Trevor Noah. John Stewart was the fucking beacon for America on, you know, uh daily show. And he had plenty of diverse women getting in the feminist point of view with Samantha B or uh, the black point of view with, with other correspondents and whatnot. But he was the best man for the job as a host and a chair and deliverer. They they brought up Jordan Klepper at Improv Olympic. He wanted that spot so bad and was ready to sit there the next day and take over from Jon Stewart and not miss a beat. They went with Noah um, and a South African guy who's not even really known in comedy and doesn't have the – he's funny sometimes, but doesn't nearly have the delivery chops that Klepper has, who became – you know, an associate on there and has gotten his own shows since then. 
but that's the perfect version of a diversity hire who's nowhere near the fucking guy for the job comparatively. But because of the time we live in, it dictates us to do that kind of shit because corporate brass does it. And now the daily show, you want to talk about a ratings dip compared to like Monday night raw and where the fuck they are now. The daily Mm. show is nothing on the radar. It's nothing because of what they did to fucking push a political message over the best possible comedy show that needs to influence people in where they get their real fucking news from, dude. That there's no arguing that the Daily Show by the numbers and content wise doesn't mean fuck all anymore, dude. Because Let me of ask you a question cuz Stewart was was very funny and the way he, you know, obviously had a, has his own viewpoint or agenda or, or narrative. Trevor Noah, every bumper I see for, because I want to watch YouTube, it'll come up with the ad that, for example, he, had, he with this ad, he might have already had him on Biden. He's going to have sure. Biden on that night. So obviously his, his setup is actually shittier than ours. All these talk show hosts can't even get like lab lights for <laughs> a month or, or good cameras. It took them so long. Trevor Noah's saying tonight, I'm going to have, Joe Biden, presidential candidate. And he goes, sounds very presidential, doesn't it? I'm like, first of all, how's that fucking funny? And then what, what kind of hook is that? To get, you're saying I, you want Biden to be president. I get it. But how am I going to fucking watch the show or be entertained by this? Am I right? Yeah, is, absolutely. Is that, the, that might be why he's there, just to be the talking head. It's Viacom. It's all CIA and and Dem driven. I mean, they, they've shown that they are using it as a weaponized version of comedy instead of doing what comedy absolutely should do, which is walk the the razor's edge and punch both sides. Saturday Night Live did it. Daily Show did it. Klepper spinoff shows. People try and shit on him. I'm like, fuck that. Klepper is one of. Not only does he take it with a smile, he spins it out, and he's doing the man on the street high level improv stuff in the moment, catching people on aha gotchas who are Nancy Browns at the fucking MAGA shit. And sure. They're going to cut out 90% of who he talks to for the juicy bits. But dude, that's a guy who's in the fucking lion's den doing his comedy, not a fucking to get a piece with no laughs and sound bites. Like, you know, like that's some serious shit putting it on the line right there, bro. And, uh, when the reality is he should have been had the main desk and that show would still be a viable satire entity, but they've done this with so many shows now and, and whatnot, and it's just not going to get there. And I almost want to say, this is going to sound not racist, but like virtue signaling for white guy. I watched, um, I think it's called Robbie. I, I the, the new show, it's a sitcom on comedy central. I don't know if it's just for their YouTube or it's actually on the platform itself now, but that could be a new thing where they try and flip it, where <laughs> the black show or the the minority show is going to get greenlit first, and the white guy's pilot is going to fucking web. Just as a power play shift, I could see him pulling that fucking move, dude. It's a very funny show. I'd rather watch it online anyway, but whatever. So, what, what, so you know how it works when someone's getting auditioned or interviewed for a job as a writer or a job as a comedian on SNL or whatever, whatever show we're talking about. If you're over, so, if you're over 25, 26 right now the, in, in Chicago, they don't even want to fucking see you for Saturday night live. Think about how great comedy is based on life experience and the, mm-hmm. you have to have your heart broken, almost get divorced or lose a fiance, lose your best friend, have one of your parents die get fucking uh, mugged. Like these are, if you're 25 years old, you haven't really lived much fucking life to pull from to make your acting real. But because of what they want trend wise, SJW wise, that's what they're fucking pulling from. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, no. You're right. You're absolutely right. How can you tell a joke when you haven't really experienced it? What would the auditioning or interview process be now? Like you, you, you touched on it. So you have, say five of the best comedians in the world, say you have, let me just say, just ignoring anything that they, they're controversy for what they have. Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, um, George Carlin, 
let's see who else joe rogan i'm just throwing them out there mm -hmm. different different types of people and the fifth one would be uh let's just put, try to pick another bobby Wu, because now you have an asian thrown sure. in there now how would you look at these five comedians and there's there's maybe two jobs available what would you do like what would you do now being one of them, how would you determine? Because in their own right, they're all over to some extent, or have been the most over in their in their category. Think about that. You know, Bobby Wu's the wild card, but he's pretty over. He's just not mainstream sure. over. Sure. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I mean, who do you pick to put in there? Like it should be the draw. <laughs> how would you pick it? Oh. How would you pick it these days? Being them, you got to go. Um... Who's going to be, who's not going to give you blowback from the gay community? So Chappelle might be out right there. Mm -hmm. Chappelle's Chappelle's definitely out based off of that alone, for sure. Uh, Kevin Hart, based on his fucking things, they're not going to go for him either. So George Carlin. Uh, okay, but you just disqualified maybe, two black maybe not, people in the middle right, of. <laughs> right? That, this is what I'm saying. They will fucking, vir they, they are now rank their virtue signaling. They now rank. But isn't that racist against black people yeah, automatically? No, well, do we, because, uh, well, Bobby Wu, maybe, because uh, he'll be the, the neutral one because we're so against it with communism. That will show we're that much forward thinking already to uh, the Asian plight of how they've been stereotyped. So I think they'd choose Bobby Wu. Who was the other one besides Carlin? Rogan. Ro who's the most over $100 million dollar man that's, right now. That, they, would, they would pick him because... He fucking. They would pick they, the they, white guy out of all. They would pick the white guy because he will say they can come back and say, "Well, we picked somebody who's testosterone. He's with uh, them, but you know, he's also open-minded to everyone's play, and he's he's really a philosopher of it. So we don't consider him a, a white male. We consider him somebody who is the conduit for the voice of all Americans to speak through right now. And then, but opening for him will be Bobby Wu. <laughs> they, they they would fucking tear those other three guys down based on the old generational Karen argument for fucking Carlin and go back to even if even though he's fucking said tons and tons of civil he's a civil rights activist and what it is you know what I mean tons of his bits about you know a cop shoving a fucking coat rack up another black guy's ass that whole fucking bit but the other two based on what they've said on social media alone cancel culture would fucking have them out Kevin Hart and fucking Dave Chappelle, the biggest draws, who still fit the BLM fucking mold because they would say a truth that those people who booked them would, their whole base would turn on them because they probably it would do be an a, act against them for booking. Them. It would be a thing of truth that they needed to hear that those people a, would fucking lose their minds over and say yeah. never again. That's, that's where we're are. That's where the Dude. people I love and respect. That's where a lot of them are in their fucking minds right now in the 13 years I left them to go to wrestling, bro. Being, being performers and you, especially being in the improv and comedy, you can tell the difference between a canned response, AKA the NXT, your favorite yeah. thumbs down. Uh, yeah. That's like, boo. who boos by saying boo. <laughs> that's a, I do thumbs down is one of my favorites things though, because the middle finger, the Austin's all right. But like uh, when you're driving and somebody does something bad and you fucking look, I just fucking give them the slow one up. Thumbs down. Thumbs down is one of the most devastating fucking things that someone can do to your psyche. Yeah, <laughs> if, especially much. if it's a slow one and a half head shake. Like my brother and I used to love doing thumbs down to people. <laughs> um, but because it's not like a fuck you is so an aggressive middle finger. They can come right back. Fuck you back, but yeah. thumbs down. How yeah. you answer? Thumbs down. You're like, fuck, I'm demoralized. It's yeah. so much better. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I, what I'm saying is like, um, oh, Jesus, I forgot. We're talking Sorry. Chappelle and them fucking getting canceled. Well, out you can tell a canned reaction. Sure. Like the laughing to be polite or laughing because you're supposed to laugh, uh, you know, or whatever. But Dave Chappelle's last special, when he talked about the Juicy Smollett and uh, all that stuff, people legitimately were laughing, but that would be the one joke he'll never be in Chicago. <laughs> that second city will look never at, have. Cause look you, at how they you went to bat for one him. of our own. Look how they went to bat for him and they got their fucking nuts caught in a bear trap, right? They wanted to be there. They wanted the black gay man who's on the fucking, 
the hottest uh, black show, the, the, you know, it's, it's called The Black Sopranos. Many a time Empire was early on. 26 rating, and we're get, we're hyping it up. Me Too movement, da 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 you know, Make American Great Again, anti that, all that. And this fucking dude who fits all the profiles for everything they would love. Professional, gay man, performer, celebrity, toe the line for LGBTQ, makes it all up in a fucking look at me virtue signal, fake fucking attack that they then have to spend millions on in the city of Chicago to investigate. It's all fucking bullshit and they end up with egg on their face showing that it was probably orchestrated from on high. We didn't even get that and they sweep it on the carpet. These are the, like, this is what happens to them over and over and over again. Now that was a bigger picture. This is in house. This is fucking happening in their, they're, they're playing with matches and just fucking lighting the curtains on fire going, this is fun. Isn't it? What could possibly fucking go wrong now? It's unbelievable to me, bro. This is, this is, uh, you know, this, you know, Crow triple seven talked about modern day book burning that we're hope we were wishing for the days of that version of the modern day book burning. Now it's what can you call this modern day content burning modern day, modern day mind, burning. Mind mentality mind. burning. Yes, it is. It's exactly that. I was thinking that myself, dude, like what is the MO here to shatter a paradigm of white Jewish comedy owners? Because that's really what it is. Not just trying to help her and what's going on there locally. Uh, but in Hollywood, you know, of like a fucking mind wipe, mind erase that it's going to suck now, but 20 years from now, it'll be worth it. Uh, I don't think you have the fucking magic eight ball vision to look down that fucking chamber with the decisions you're making. Now I see resentment, uh, in, in fucking, uh, equity hires that are fucking, uh, based on, you know, minority, uh, and, and it's going to come back and blow back on people, man. It, what's crazy is people seeing the, uh, the, the, my actor friends promoting this and retweeting it, knowing subconsciously that there's there, these precious little spots of 80 people who get to make it in comedy, like every two years, maybe not even 80, maybe like 40. And there's 10,000 people trying to gun through that door. Now, 5,000 of them, because of their SJW Chicago mindset, are pushing that whole thing forward because they want to support their community and they want to be forward-thinking actors who love all races, which I totally love. I, I'm down with that. They're pushing themselves right out of the fucking door for it. And they know it, and they're doing it wide-eyed. That's, that's fucking crazy to me, dude. Some of the most talented people are going to fall by the wayside because they're not going to want to jump through all the hoops and go through all the trouble. So that 10,000 you talked about could now be a thousand. So 9,000 potential talents that could entertain the world and influence the next generation of young people to want to follow we'll, we'll their We'll not dreams. get a spot. We'll not get a spot. They're going to be accountants. Uh, fucking, <laughs> they aren't going to care. That exact, they're going to leave in droves because their minds are way too fucking phenomenal. That's why they're almost idiots of Vance who find this, pay their dues in hopes to get on a show like Drunk History or I can talk about Craig Kukowski well, or the, Dude, whatever, is that, dude, is like, that going to be in the pandemic? Just to, I'm sorry to cut you off. The mm -hmm. pandemic and the unemployment rates, but what about the minds of people and the hearts and the souls of people that are going to be so empty that they're looking at this going, I can't follow my dream because of the way the system is going to move forward. It might be an alarmist view, but won't suicides go up? Won't certain things go up? No, actors are of... very stable people. They would never do anything yeah, rash. Like <laughs> Absolutely. It's going to fucking be that dude. And then there'll be another movement of save our depression and why they, it's all self-inflicted bruise touching at the end of the day, bro. Every bit of it. And it's going to be harder for any white comedian. And I'm not trying to be like, Oh, the poor white man, but guys who've been putting their grind in for 10 years, when it comes pilot season, the fucking lesser product written by a, I'm not saying it's going to be a lesser product because it's written by a minority, but whatever is written by someone is going to be viewed first with priority over something that may be a quality written by someone who's not deemed a minority. And that's a, that's an issue. 
that is a, and you're, you're sacrificing quality, uh, for, uh, you know, a moral fucking code that is only going to breed more animosity. I don't, I don't get why, how that is now the model, you know, instead of also working together and collaborating. The, the thing to me would be if you really were going to do affirmative action stuff and you're going to put teams together that every team has to be 25, 25, 25, Male, female, minority, and fucking uh, LGBTQ if it fits a thing. But then you have to ask people these things and what, you know, you can't come out and fucking say this stuff. So how do you implement these rules as opposed to just having executives on high who fit the bill and they get to fucking green stamp or green light uh, what's going to go forward? Now, we got too many shows by white guys, but dude, this guy's fucking hilarious uh sorry we met our quota on that we gotta fucking offer the the minority roles their fucking uh, spot on it well or if one of those role one of those one of those minorities or trans or whatever get beat out by the better comedian or the better performer that might even just be a white woman i mean you don't even it's not just a white male type thing it's a tie it's you can have trouble just for the fact, because everybody gets a participation trophy in these days. Imagine they, the culture. And that's not a racism. That's a mentality of you don't you don't learn the lesson from the loss. You and I have learned a lot more lessons from getting fucked over, from losing, from making the mistakes to recover from those. Dude, the generation that's coming up now and the way you're, you, we can't, nobody makes mistakes. Nobody loses. Nobody... You can't tell somebody that, you know, save their money because you're judging them on their spending habits or anything. See what I mean? Dave Ramsey got called, got called names like that because he's judging people. Well, don't fucking call into the show. Yes. Don't call into the show and ask the guy a fucking question. And then he gives you an answer and you go, how dare he judge me and my spending habits? Mm. Are you kidding me? But that's the world, right? hundred percent of the, the double fucking standard. And I don't want to, uh, this to come off of me going at my mentors who are, you know, I've learned from plenty of the most phenomenal improvisers of minority and uh, sexual orientation. And I'm not saying everybody needs to have their own show, but I think the best use of putting whatever your, it is if it's gay rights or it's a black civil rights or if it's to show that you know a blandness i don't give a shit whatever it is the the doldrums of the cul-de-sac you lived in that can all come together in their own individual yeah let's push it forward because i can enjoy it just as much even if i don't relate to it if it's done at a high level uh abby mckinney uh uh who i was probably a five, six year performer ahead of me in Chicago. And I watched every show at Improv Olympic she was ever on. She's got a lot of neurotic uh, tendencies and, and issues based on her LGBTQ uh, life and being discriminated against. But now her show, dude, if you haven't watched it work in progress, it's on Amazon Prime now, is phenomenal. And that's everybody who I kind of studied under or came up in Chicago watching that's all the neighborhoods I lived in right there by Boys Town and Wrigleyville and that is a perfect vehicle and done so tastefully to put over the mental issues she goes through the struggle and teaching people about pronouns and cisgender things I don't really spend time on or study but they do it in a show don't tell with emotional connection really if, if you want to see a great show work in progress is that but now, if we muddy the waters and just start green lighting things that aren't that, she's a 20, 25 year pro. That's the perfect vehicle for her. Now, if we're just going to make stuff to make it to fucking fill a void, sure, they'll be funny in it, but I don't think it's going to come from the people who really deserve the shot, who've worked in there. Somebody in the chat room asked, Imagine how many Phil Hartmans we're losing out on. I could name you a hundred that you've never heard of who are as good, if not better than, I don't say better than Phil Hartman, who could fill those fucking shoes, who will now never get a shot, who will never find a vehicle because they will now be pushed under the pile based on this fucking movement. And that's where I'm like choking on it, bro. 
And our I final story. <laughs> the, bell is, the bells are still successful no, this, somehow. It's, it's, a, it's a heater story. Tommaso Ciampa and Randy Orton have a war of words on social media. Uh, Orton goes, hey, uh, NXT TakeOver in Your House was great. Slapping my legs for you guys. Sincerely, hashtag leg slap. Tommaso comes back over. He says, my daughter's been having trouble sleeping. Luckily, I found a remedy. Randy Orton matches. No better than Ike will. Sincerely, uh, hashtag the entire locker room who busted their asses. Orton comes back. Looks like I hurt the feelings of a self-appointed locker room leader of a wrestling school. Let me know what time the hashtag leg slap class starts so I can take my game to the next level. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then in a follow-up to that, Orton comes with... uh, uh, on a backlash conference call, uh, I was asked about what it would be like to go to NXT to face off against Ciampa, who recently had been trading jabs on Twitter. He said, yeah, whatever Vince tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Orton said, if it's working with Tommaso Ciampa, then I'd be all for it. I think he's very talented, and there's a few things I can help him with, mainly to help him get a little more out of his career. I know he's been plagued with injuries, but I also know he loves and respects this business. The NXT guys worry about me because I, NXT guys worry me because I see them doing such highly physical things during their matches those things are dangerous and they wear and tear in your career. Orton discusses NXT styles of matches being more physical and high risk when compared to the main roster. He says, when you see so much of that back to back, you don't get to invest in these matches because they're just one thing after another. Although it's highly physical and impressive, I wouldn't be able to do that style because they're going to have very short careers. I worry about Ciampa in particular because of all these big injuries he's had. He needs to learn how to tell stories and slow it down and not think that fans want to see him kill himself. You're only as good as the last match you ever had. Uh, You only get three or four years of a career with WWE because you had a lot of careless and reckless moves. Uh, You should look back and kick yourself in the ass and wish that you didn't, Orton said. Smarter, not harder. When it comes down to it, this is a business and we all need to make money. You can destroy your body and make no money doing it. And then you end up working at McDonald's because you never went to college and you destroyed your neck in the ring. There has to be a purpose, and that purpose is getting paid. Uh, That's my biggest concern for those NXT guys. I would love to go down there and share a little bit of knowledge with them. They're both... Jordan turns baby face through a conference call. (laughs) They're both Rip Rogers fucking OVW guys, man. I don't understand. I mean, I understand exactly what Orton's saying because I stood face to face with Ciampa and said the same fucking thing along with a, I love you, brother. Don't fucking do more of this, please. And then he's, they banned the buckle bomb and on NXT takeover, he's taking fucking apron bombs instead, bro. Full Mm -hmm. fucking boom jar in the neck and it's not even anything that leads into a finish it's just a transition on the outside get your shit and stuff and i i I don't know how you protect this guy from himself man uh care about him and uh, like to keep seeing this type of shit that just uh boggles my mind if Shawn michaels is his boy that and fucking that he idolizes and now he's in the pocket of game and him why are they letting him do that shit man yeah and (coughs) walking around with a rod in his back too yeah and then not trying to make sure there's no more rods to be passed around to be a surgery. Hey, uh, Ciampa at this point, he looks incredible. He still looks great. He's in great shape, but there's going to come a point where that spine, that neck, that tingling, whatever he had before the surgery is going to creep its way back. And then you're going to lose your body because you're not going to be able to work out or you're going to have nerve damage and atrophy. You're going to have the Paul Orndorff arm. He's 16 years in. This is his 16th year in, bro, of taking bumps. What kind of money are they uh, paying? I know that they said Adam Cole gets like six. There's guys getting full-time money on that roster now, but still it can't be enough to live off of for the rest of your life if you're in a wheelchair. Not if you're in a wheelchair, no. Um, it, it just sucks, man. Like, And it's not like Ciampa. That's the thing. If it was an indie – strictly CZW to ROH guy where I could shit on it because he doesn't know how to work. That's one thing, but I absolutely know that he knows it. And I, and it, it, I said it to his face, like I said, and him and Orton going back and forth to fucking get the ribs on Twitter was good and funny or whatever. But it, and when Orton goes baby and tells it like it is, they're the same words, man. And I don't know how game and fucking Sean are letting that happen. That's, that sucks. And I don't want to say fine Champa, but if that's what's going to fucking take, that's what it's going to take to keep him from protecting him from himself, then maybe it needs to be, bro. You know? 
I don't have a good answer. I don't have a good answer for that. And there's yeah. no people in the crowd and there's no, not that that makes a difference, but man. And you said it wasn't the finish. The guy, you know, crosses. It was uh, three minutes. This is a choke. Yeah. It's enough. It's enough to, to put, pri there's enough on your neck right there. Work wise to say he's choking him out. That's his injured neck. Whatever it is. Well, the but thing the, is, they just banned buckle bombs two days before. So you have you. The thing is, Cross is a psycho. You have him look like he's gonna fucking give him a apron bomb, but Champa gets out of it because they just banned it. So the fact that it makes Cross look like I don't give a fuck, I'll do it anyway. That would have been the spot, and then get it out of there. But the fact that he hit it even lessened it. So, well, he even lessened it that hitting it and then not ending the match right there and DQ and cross for a band move, putting heat on him. Wow. So great. If you're going to do great. it. What's that? That would have been great. That would have been great. I didn't even think of that. They didn't think of it either. Stevie thought of it. Stevie. Stevie's never welcome back. There. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of it. Stevie thought of that. Um, secondary roofs at the end of the day. Oh yeah, a lot, man. I, I I don't know what to say. I've talked about that in length before. I don't I don't mind it when Orton goes at guys like that because it's always going to be some Rip Rogers shit. It just is the fact that it's on another Rip Rogers guy who's not doing it the method that we were taught, unfortunately. And uh, you, you got to look at Orton and see what he's doing and the money he's making, the longevity he's had, and how his body is holding up after all that. He's had his injuries too, mm -hmm. but. And attach yourself to him because I know Orton's probably got stroke at this point. Orton's got a influence on Vince and maybe well Hunter's not even in the mix, but you know what I mean. He's got an influence in the company. So if Randy kind of says there could be a storyline with that of Randy doing what Hunter did by taking him under his wing, there could be a lot of stuff that could be done. But I would mirror anything that Randy does in the ring, business wise and money wise, because it seems to be working for him. It seems, seems like things are going well. There's no doubt about it. He's got a pool. They don't call Randy Orton to come over and shoot at his pool. That's for sure. So, uh, <laughs> but we, that's enough shooting bang, bang for the locker room today. Uh, thanks for letting me vent Stevie, because I, I just, that's been swirling around in my head and I need to do a ha 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 mean with Rachel Mason. So I can understand because I don't want to pass judgment on people. I have a ton of respect for who I, from afar, it, I feel like I usually have a pretty decent lock on things <laughs> of what it is. And this one has just got me like, uh, blah, 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 blah. so uh, you, you want me to give my thoughts on what I see, not knowing yeah. them, but knowing you, sure. You you've grown so much as a person since you left that, but when you live in nothing but the echo chamber, you actually regress as a person. Your thought regresses. They're not, you're not the same as them as, anymore. You've grown in so many other ways. You still have the the foundation and the love for that place, but you're you're different. You're different than even any, like just being in the wrestling business and looking outside of the projects you're doing. You see the world in many different eyes and many different ways using your life experience rather than saying, "Screw life experience. I want to tell me what to feel. Tell me what to think." Yeah, You're well, not that guy anymore. They're dude. swimming with the fuck it. Yeah, if I was in there, I bet I, I probably would be. I'd be going along with the fish. Maybe I understand it, but I would be I would be going along with that. So you definitely have a great point there. And I'm not trying to say I'm above and thought or anything, but just my perspective. But outside of that bubble, but I also saw cancel culture and Me Too movement start there. Uh, I'm gonna get a hold of Zach Ward too. I remember when I sent you that long thing and I wanted you guys to read it uh, about how he got canceled and bumped out of Chicago based on, or he left Chicago, not bumped out of there, but like when he went to North Carolina and then there was like, you know, kind of shit where you eat and uh, a mistake that way, but came back to bite him in the ass. And he was one of the first cancel cultures pre me too movement, maybe six, seven years before that. And I had was in wrestling. So we had lost contact, but uh that was a start of it in the offices. Like I remember that was going on. And I was watching from afar, maybe four or five years before me too. And all that shit happened. So they were leading the way with let's bounce people out based on tramp past transgressions or quid pro quo, not Weinstein level. Suck my dick. If you want a spot on a team, but there was plenty of pressure of like, 
we go out me from nerds who don't know how to talk to girls <laughs> and they were using their power uh to some degree to try and do that is that wrong absolutely um but i don't the the story with him as it came out later it didn't matter it was already cancel culture had got him ruined him and there was a lot more to it so there there was a weird push for this type of split mentality uh of uh going on before it really hit mainstream there too and that's something i don't understand because i wasn't there for i mean i get the gist of the story of it all and how they got to that but uh I got I got some more work to do, not just on myself, but to to get to understand why or why not they're acting like that. Because there's people within that bubble that I know who have left improv and do see it how I do with them just constantly virtue signaling and towing the line. Because they think as a majority or white majority or whatever you are, if you promote the minority like their viewpoint that much more along, it's going to bring you up into that upper SJW level of we're all in it together to go along and get along. The reality is they know that they're pushing themselves out of a fucking job while they do it. Weird. It's weird. Mm. Yo, uh, uh, <laughs> and it's going to continue to get weirder as we do light the fuse and uh, talk about AEW. I'll be back here at twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman. Who knows within the next five minutes or 25 minutes, probably by 11 a.m. Uh, as I get the, the next chat room set up and lined up to uh, bring on MSG and uh, the Chris Silvio. Always look forward to him bringing some more positivity to my life. Uh, Because he he definitely uplifts me, man. So you uplift me as well, Stevie. And I know you got plenty going on with the new home gym rack. You got the new weights with uh, Skittles colors. They uh, looked like Takashi 6 9 in there. It was actually getting me pumped up because it looked like a bunch of plastic rolls that I would use for my 3D printer. So I was like, damn, he's got a lot of filament in there. Oh, it's just weights. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm about to pull the trigger on a 3d printer. It just, it can't be made by LG. That's oh, all. Okay. That's, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like I say, at the end of each of those videos, I'm really, I'm really blessed and grateful to be able to not only, um, you know, have the home gym, but have collaborations, working relationships or other things or affiliate stuff. You know, we talk about, we joke about the code for force USA and other things, but there is a, there is a, there is a monetization path for being ethical in your influence. We joke about influencers, but you know, I want to do a video about that, about a, affiliates or influencers or, or an ethical way to do that. Cause I do believe I've, I've stayed in that vein. I mean, we all started out with when we did reviews on YouTube of having the Amazon sellers contact you. We have free product. If uh, you know, you write, if you can write a decent review and my whole, right. whole thing was always, Hey, if it's a good product, I'll do, I'll write a good review for it or I'll do whatever. But you know, there's a certain, there's a certain worship of people that just show the unethical nature of the influencer. Somehow the influencer has become a bigger star than a full-time wrestler on TV Yeah, these days. It's really quite sick, but going back to the home gym thing, it's just, you know, I always say that stuff and it's kind of cool that this was my dream. Like I say many, many times to have a home gym and like, like all the big stars had or whatever, when I first thought of it, but to actually have my own sanctuary, my own, you know, place to, to call my own where I can work out and, and do anything I want with it mm-hmm. and share it with people like my wife. And if you live close, I'd share it with you too. No <laughs> social distancing necessary. All right on, man. Uh, but I need to get back in a, a badass gym like that, but I've been going hard with Stevie Richards fitness, man. I feel pretty good. Even uh, the XL t-shirts make me feel stronger, a little uh, tighter on the arms. Um, but I had bust a sweat and do what I need to do to keep going, man. So with your stuff is every week. It's a new, like <laughs> more insane setup of like the best of the best stuff. So I'm glad you're getting it and using it and putting it all your technology uh, to work, to help people stay motivated, bro. That That's what it does for me every time. So um, and, I, and sometimes, I, not lately, sometimes when I would be a supreme fat bastard watching something, I'd be like, fuck, I could be up doing 
whatever right now, you know, while I'm doing this, it's usually at that time, one of your fucking post hits and <laughs> up I go, <laughs> up I go. <laughs> so, uh, all good. dude. Oh, by the way, I look forward to getting completely unpersoned and demonetized when I start, uh, covering, uh, different types of technology with firearms training. So I look forward to, I look forward to not being in existence after that. Cause we have lots of cool little tech stuff to, to teach you how to, how to work safely and effectively mm -hmm. with, a firearm. I'm somebody basically new to it. So it's going to be a, a good information thing. There's actually a thing when you monetize your video, is there real or fake firearm content in this video? Meaning if you use after effects with a muzzle flash or anything, you That's could big. potentially be limited in monetization wow. or wow. what the fuck, dude. We'll see. Sorry, that's a whole nother uh, no, thing, I, got, I just got remonetized. I don't know what the over under is, but we're going to start the pool this week on how long <laughs> before that fucking ad comes crashing down and hurts inside. So y'all all infidels. It's big Stevie. Cool. It's hacker. I mean, it's your Friday locker room, ultra declassified kayfabe edition here at twitch.tv slash conspiracy horseman. Tons of content coming out for you. Share the McAfee, uh, extra special content that I'm going to drop uh, alongside this. Go over uh, Russo's YouTube, uh, hit that like, subscribe, and get uh, the notifications because Stevie and I are working hard to get out some of the best Russo clips. Ted the Trailer McNailer, also El Plaza, Kaz, and Chris uh, helping out there too, man. So appreciate you guys for tuning in live, and uh, I'll be back probably in the next 20 minutes after I uh, eat some carbs, Stevie. In your face, infidels. Yalla. <laughs>